Well, hey, welcome to church chat. It's church chat it's time. Church chat. Uh, some, <laughs> one of our members told me that she searched for church chat on the podcast, like uh, just in general, and it brought up this amazing clip from Saturday Night Live with like... The church lady. Yeah, and she called it church chat, which I did not realize. <laughs> well, isn't that special? <laughs> yeah. So hmm. I feel like that is us, though, in some ways. The church lady? Yeah. I don't... I mean, maybe. You don't think? I mean, she's pretty, you know... You know, got a stick. She's pretty, you know, church lady-ish. Yeah. We should, we should, we should play that. I, I, I guess that YouTube or whatever would take it down if we put the little clip in know. our thing. Probably. Yeah. But anyway, reminded me mm. of that. <laughs> well, we're glad you're here for church chat. Thank you. Could listener. it be Satan? <laughs> So if you've seen, if you haven't seen SNL's church chat, like stop listening to us, go watch it. It's fantastic. No, keep listening to it. But us. then come back. They'll yeah. come back. Maybe, maybe if we talk about the church lady enough, YouTube will start suggesting, you know, SNL skits yeah. after us. I would like to be associated with SNL. That would yeah, be fun. Yeah, sometimes YouTube makes weird connections and I'm like, oh no, I don't want that connected right. to our church podcast. <laughs> uh, so we're, this is our, th- our third episode. Third episode. Of church chat. We, we made it. Yeah, only because Antoine keeps us accountable. We have a producer now. Yeah. And that's fantastic. And that is, we need like a handler, not just a producer. producer. We need a handler. In most aspects of my life, I already have a producer. But it's nice for us together to have to have one. It is so great. Th- thanks, yeah, Antoine. So we love Antoine. Um, so so we have so we're starting out. We have some questions. Yeah. So Mushy. we're actually doing two podcasts today because we're going to be away next week. Oh, so we'll release one this the week. Movie, the movie magic. <laughs> one next week. Um, so the other one we'll be doing is featuring Jonathan McKinney and Vanessa Urban. So you'll want to check the one out next week as well. Unless we're, unless it we're it's in the other order. Week. It is next we week. We might switch sides of the couch <laughs> to show that time has passed. I just don't want them to think I only have one shirt, like people who watch it on video. Well, I, I could wear this for the rest of my yeah, life. People would be like... White guy uniform. Yeah. Yeah. We saw it yesterday. We were out and there were four men out to lunch or at Starbucks. And they all had on like a blue button up shirt tucked into khaki pants with a brown belt. And it was like a little terrifying. It was like the lamest gang in the whole world. <laughs> yes. It was, I was like a little afraid. I was worried it's going to be like a little West Side Story. Like they'd start snapping and walking towards us. No, because in West Side Story, they can dance. (laughs) Um, Okay, that's true. That's true. Okay, so so back to church chat. Back to church chat. Church chat, you know, so we always want questions. Yeah. uh, And right now the questions have been coming in through YouTube comments. Right. uh, And uh, and, and today's questions are all from one of our favorite church members, Michelle, uh, Michelle Fort. Fort. Thank we you, Michelle. We love Michelle. So the first thing Michelle asks, she asks Megan, uh, what did you decide to give up for Lent and why? And which is a great question because right now I have actually have not given up anything for Lent. And I have, I have, there are reasons. There are threefold. <laughs> um, the first one is honestly, I just, I didn't, I just didn't do it this year, which is not a great reason, but I didn't do it. But part of that, a couple of things in January, um, we gave up a lot of things. Um, and so we did dry January and we cut back on like sweets and caffeine and tried to really streamline our lives. So I feel mm-hmm. like we kind of started the year in that place, but from a spiritual standpoint, um, this year focusing more on like, what am I adding in? So especially these daily Bible readings, um, is kind of a part of my Lenten discipline this year too, because it's been really good to be reading the Bible every day, but I didn't give up like a specific thing this year what did you give up this year i i the same thing i tried to give up in january and it's going terribly (laughs) trying to to eliminate shopping as a hobby and i really love shopping like there's just always so many things it's online shopping specifically it's not like dave's like wandering around target every day with like yeah me and all (laughs) right right it's not it's not that so but it's 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 just something i i pass the time with and there's always these things that come up that I, I need to find the best deal on. Yeah. And so then it's just like, oh, I'm just back. I feel like it's more like you're like a hunter. Like, I think you can reframe yeah. this. I like, I I like it sounds much more masculine. Like, yeah. I love shopping. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's more much. Yeah. You're a mighty I'm hunter, a, like a, going out to. Hunting out for. To find yeah, cashews on sale was, for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that comes up. This week it was mic stands for this. Right. You know, we're going to get some cool See, mic stands that hide behind the. Uh, the, the the couch and come out man we're getting so we're yeah. getting so fancy but yeah so i'm that's the way i, I nest is is by buying stuff for things and but i i don't want to i i'm okay. still working on it i'll encourage you every day is a new chance to to to, to make a change every day is a fresh start that's the gospel yeah. every day is a fresh absolutely start. every day is a fresh start michelle uh, i'd like to know what are you giving up for lint so let oh us know. yeah i need to ask her when i see her or, we'll or you know, comment comment on youtube that's right let us we'll know we'll share it 
in two weeks. <laughs> but Michelle also asked a really good question. She asked if we could talk more about generational curses and cycle breakers and cycle breakers. And I think that's such a good that's such a good topic. She and... actually asked if we could do a whole episode about it. And so, OK, yeah, we'll do it right now. We're going to do it right now. Um, so let's talk about generational curses. So when we talk about generational curses, of course, we're talking about families. Families and, and, and specifically in the Bible, you know, these these things about, uh, 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 yeah, th- these things that happen in, in clans and, and, and the right. families. But, yeah, it makes us think about makes our families. Makes you think about your family. And our families are probably more functional than most. Like, we were both lucky to have, like, mom and dad were both, you know, were married, lived in the same home, loved each other, loved their kids. No family is perfect. But we're not going to, like air our family's dirty laundry on the podcast. But mine is. Hi, mom. Hi, dad. I know you listen to this. <laughs> yeah, your parents listen. Mine don't. I love my parents, but there's no way they're listening to my podcast. <laughs> like, I could, I, could, I could say anything. They'd never know, but I won't because I, I feel like that would be wrong right. and unfair. Yeah. Uh, but then maybe they'd start listening to it because they would hear that I'm saying things about them. <laughs> but our families are really different. Like, yeah, both really we, good families. And that's something really we really different. discovered really, really viscerally our first year of marriage when, you know, yeah. our family stuff, you know, came to a head and, and at each other, you know, yes. because yes. my our, ours, you know, just especially on household stuff, our families are just really different. Yeah. It's like the everyday stuff that were yeah. really different. Like the, like, like the day Specifically day. around the, the dinner table, especially. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like I have, like, I don't want to say trauma memories, but like just very visceral memories. Is my, am I bumping this? It's no, bothering you. Okay. Great. Um, very visceral memories of my first time having dinner at the Collins home because it was just so different. So let me set the stage. Let me set the stage okay. about my family. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I grew up as a child of two engineers. Um, and so dinner was like a very orderly affair, like kind of to set the stone. If you can imagine a room with like really white carpet that has stayed white, like that's my family. Like you are only allowed to eat at the dinner table or like over the sink, but never like on the couch or in another room. And so you went and got your plate and you served it in the kitchen because it would be, it was very no nonsense. Like we're not going to make extra dishes dirty just to have plates on the table with the food. Right. Then you walk into the dining room table and everyone sits down very orderly, very quiet conversation. Everyone's holding the knife and fork correctly, like napkins on your lap. Very wonderful, like family conversation, but no one's leaning back in their chair chair like that was a big no-no in my house oh. yeah yeah and then when dinner's done everyone takes their plates to the kitchen scrapes them in the trash dishes are done within about eight seconds of the meal being concluded and they move on like it's efficient it's clean we get the job done and, and my family is basically the opposite of everything you right. just said like if you've seen my big fat greek wedding you're living our lives yeah like that is the the uh, contrast where my family would be the the greeks yes. and your family would be the wasps <laughs> but your family was so fun but it oh, was yeah. like the first time there it was so different yeah so we, yeah we'd stay at the table for you know, over an hour every 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 meal, right, right, and everything's always on the table, and and we we insisted on passing the dishes opposite ways. So like all the food was on the table in platters to be passed around, which was already different. But then like we can't even all pass them clockwise or counterclockwise. No. So there's a moment what's the, what's the where point like of that? you're holding a pat- platter of what were very large steaks for one person to eat, yeah. and then coming at you from the other side is the potatoes, and then right on like right behind it we have the salad, and it's just yeah, it's chaos. <laughs> that's 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 the way the way life should be. <laughs> so it's like now, like and, and and the other dynamic is like you know my family, uh, especially growing up, you know we would we would dig at each other, we would we'd make fun of each other, you know it was boisterous. It was boisterous. It was boisterous. And and so, that's when your grandmother was still alive too, and mm-hmm. um, your mom's mom was wonderful. And like, but like, like never spoke English. Big super personality, well. never spoke English very well. Like lots, like had like certain sayings that, that we would try to get her you, to say. Her every family time. would try and bait her into saying. <laughs> Like one of them was like about how acting is like in the blood of your family. So she said it's in the blood. And it got to her like it was kind of a running thing about how many of mama's sayings could come up in one meal. Yeah. yeah so that it was, was just fun. not it was a contrast. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a little, a little, little hard for you to come into that. So when we come together, then like you call those your family of origin is like the you know, psychological term. But like we each bring in ex- like kind of ingrained expectations and understandings that we think are just everyone does this, but that's that stuff that you learn in your family growing up. Absolutely. And it's it's about dinner time. It's about what does it mean to be family? It's about what's acceptable behavior or language. How does your family express anger? How do they deal with conflict? Like there's all these things that you learn growing up. And until you engage another family, you just think this is what families do. Absolutely. 
right? Yeah, hundred percent. And so that's so okay. Why are we talking about this? Let's get back to generational curses. Um, generational curses come up in families, so we want to talk some about are those. What, so what do you think? Do you think generational curses are real or not real? Well, so you're talking about like the the, the Bible passages about like the God visiting. Yeah. Yeah. So so. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I definitely you definitely see them at play, you know, with yeah. with families, uh, especially with addiction, uh, you know, where where that is kind of perpetuates and and you know, uh, pe- people uh, self soothe and self medicate because of what mm-hmm. they because of the trauma they've experienced growing up in a family with addiction and because that's the only way they ever learned how to how to cope. Uh, so they right. definitely definitely see that you know at at work. Yeah. So like, so I would argue yes and no, like they're, mm-hmm. they're real and they're not real. And I think we'll talk some more about that. So this comes up in Bible study, especially we've been doing this, reading the Bible for a year and we've been in the Old Testament a lot. And earlier in Exodus, it talks about how um, visiting the inequity of the parents upon like the children and the grandchildren and the great grandchildren and generations and generations. Um, that word inequity, of course, means sin. So it kind of at first read makes it sound like, oh, God's going to punish like the great grandchildren for the sin of the great grandparents. And that feels really troubling, I think, yeah, to all of us. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel fair. But then you get into later passages in Deuteronomy where it says, basically, like, the, the, you will not be punished mm-hmm. for the sins of the parents. And so it, we are in this tension of like, what do we do with that? Right. Yeah. 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 You know, it makes me think about bulldogs. <laughs> okay. I'm dying to know where that's going. Tell me more about this. Well, th- this idea that, that, so sin is not just something that you do. It's something that's right? done to you. Right. Okay. And you, we're, we're not just perpetrators of sin. We're, we're victims of sin. And, uh, uh, no, and I, I, I'm spoiling, you know, I want to do a whole sermon about this someday. About what? About bulldogs. Okay. Um, especially what a bulldog looks like now. Like a bulldog is just like a, a, a vivid example of being sinned against. Hmm. Like there's a yeah. whole community of people who have decided to just sin against bulldogs by making them, you know, have these these horrible faces and they can't breathe. Because they can't breathe, they, right, they, they, right. And it's a, they're, they're trying to, to make them look a certain way. And so it just makes it so they, you know, they choke to death and it's just a horrible way to live. It's not the bulldog's fault. Right. Like the bulldog didn't ask to, 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 to be, you know, to look like this, but people keep doing it to them. And there's there's all these structures in place. There's dog shows. There's mm-hmm. just, you know, P- Instagram. Like breed standards. And, yeah. Right. And, and those those things have changed over time. And so just because of, you know, how through no fault of their own. You know, a, a bulldog is just a an example of, of generational curses. Generational okay. curses. Yeah. And 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 it's we would call so when we when we limit the idea of sin to just uh, I knew what the right thing to do was and I didn't do it or I, I purposely did the wrong thing. We're we're that's that's only part of the picture. Like a big part of it of of you know sin and of curses and all this stuff we hear about in the Bible is just family and culture and society and all these things that you know you didn't ask to do you're probably not a, a bulldog is not morally culpable for you know the, the, right. the way that it's it's messed up but um but still that's the way it is yeah so there is like so we can see in the bulldog <laughs> and in our own lives like evidence that yes like sin sin thing like be, sinful behaviors and and ways of being can absolutely be passed down in families because you pick it up at home. Like mm-hmm. you learn behaviors or way of dealing with things in unhealthy or sinful ways. And that kind of brokenness gets translated generation to generation. And we'll talk about cycle breakers in a minute because mm-hmm. that's an important part of that. Yeah. But I think if we go back to the Exodus passage, it, it, we might like it would be a very natural question to be like, so is God doing like is God the acting agent? Right. Is God punishing people by letting that sin go and once my was like, like a really important word in yeah. that it's Exodus 34 I, I forget yeah. the, the verses but right chapter 34 and it says that God visits the iniquity of the right. parents upon the children and the children's children so the visiting word is um it's not God but it's not like an active like God punishing it's more like God is noticing the sin that's being passed down in a family generation after generation and is like leaning into it like paying attention to it um so if you're in a family that's had especially a Again, just the hardest stuff, like cycles of abuse or um, harm that's been passed down and had ripple effects into generations in your family. That's not God saying like, well, your great grandparent does something wrong. So now everyone's going to pay for it. 
it does mean sometimes bad behaviors, just like we picked up ways of being at the dinner table. Like, like mine was right and yours was just wrong. <laughs> There's some truth in that. We've got definitely leaned more towards your family than mine. Yeah. But those those behaviors kind of get passed down from by being learned. They're just learned behaviors um, in generation to generation. And when God notices that sin gets repeating itself over and over in your family system, God's going to visit that. God's going to lean in and notice it. Um, but not like condemning you. Like it's not in that way. It's not like the bulldog. Like it's not like, well, now this is just what's going to happen forever. But sometimes God doesn't fix it. You know, that, that, that it is like, you know, we're all victims of victims and, right. and, and, you know, that, that not everyone gets, gets to, to have a cycle breaker. In, in their family or not everyone gets to right. be that. And but so, everyone could, you can be a cycle breaker. And I think that's just the way that God works. Is, right. is it like, God's like, here's what you should do. I will help you do it, but I'm not right. going to do it for you. Well, and that's, that's where I would say where our bulldog analogy ends. Like a bulldog can't wake up one day and be like, now I'm a Doverman. <laughs> right. But like, you know, a bulldog is going to be a bulldog and that dog's children are going to be bulldogs. And like that outside well, unless, of unless like. Agree, unless they, you know. Right. And the breed or, 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 you know, the dog doesn't get fixed. It breaks out of the fence. Yeah. Like change the, uh, uh, the, the standards. Yeah. Right. Someone not, uh, uh, I'm sorry about the stupid bulldog analogy. <laughs> now we're trapped in it. So we're going to make it work though. So, it, it, you know, to try and make that work, a cycle breaker for a bulldog thing would have to be a breeder, not a dog. Unless, okay, so you could, okay, if you really want to lean into it, though, yes, so the breeder outside agent would be God in this analogy that now we're really going to try and, like, just make it work. I think we should, I think that this goes a bad, this is a slippery slope to somewhere we don't want to go. Wait, just one more, just one more. Let's lean in for one more minute, then we'll walk away from it. Um, The... Like, not every dog is going to have, like, the the courage and the, the vision to, like, break out of the backyard, but... Sometimes you do, and you dig your mm. way out from under the fence, and it's scary and it's terrifying because you don't know what's going to happen. But then you know you go meet a very nice poodle, and you break the cycle of of just inbreeding of that sin. Um, and then, since the bulldog immediately dies because it choked to death on its own tongue and <laughs> okay. couldn't breathe. Thanks for sticking with us. Just really, really, uh, all of that to say. Uh, you're not condemned, like you're not condemned outside of your own agency because mm-hmm. you're like, let's say your parents really did like commit sin and harm in your family system. Right. Um, it takes a lot of, of courage and um, it, just, it takes a lot of courage and vision to be the person to say, what if this stopped with me? And so yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't minimize the harm that happened to you, but we've seen people in our church that have decided like it, it stops with me. Yeah. And just how powerful that is, that and that what God's doing in that to say that's enough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, how does that connect to the to the visiting that God isn't punishing? God right. is, is it's just it's just you know God God isn't going to magically fix it, but it's right. also not you know is, is, that, is that what the the visiting means? I would I feel like I feel like that's when when God's visiting, God shows up and like moves through somebody to be like it's not that person is the one saying this is it it stops with me and that that is the way that god's intervening into that like that, that visiting the iniquity is kind of like god showing you what's really yeah. true and right like hey look don't look away like yeah. this is awful and it's true right and you got to do something about it right and sometimes that's really big stuff again like abuse that's the hard one to be mm-hmm. the person who says i'm not I'm not going to pass this behavior on to my children or my spouse. I'm not going to marry someone that's going to help me perpetuate the same cycle. I'm going to make a different choice. Super hard. And so if that's you and you're in that position, uh, we'd love to be a part of that with you and support you. And just know we've seen people do it and it can be done, but it's really hard and it's really good to have support around Mm -hmm. you. Uh, But it also can be really small stuff. Like if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, I I wasn't abused. My family's fine. No, they're not. (laughs) They're not. Except for mine. I'm dad. You're <laughs> awesome. I love you. Like every family's got stuff. And if you think your family doesn't have like sinful behaviors that they've handed to you, you are absolutely perpetuating those sinful behaviors. Like everyone should go to therapy when they're 25 and just like break it open and deal with the stuff that they were handed. But not everybody does. So it's never too late. Yeah. No, it's a small example and otherwise completely perfect. But I realized. Uh, uh, I love how careful you're uh, being. Yeah. We really do love you, Don and Sandy. Uh, that I. As well, pretty recently, I realized I I was used to getting like approval for eating, 
like for for you know because growing up you know clean clean plate club clean and, plate uh, club and, and extra and that's easy to do with boys I can't oh, yeah. say especially like society's whatever enforces this idea that like girls should eat like little birds and boys should eat like wild dogs and like it's harmful on both sides of that that it gets reinforced that way but it's just that to say like that's a really common thing yeah so not only you know approval of clean plate club but even more and this would be you know and I found this true across the board it wasn't just at my home but everyone's home extra approval for seconds and thirds and right. just you know you have a fourth plate and just you know you're just the greatest person who ever lived and so you kind of right. you do that enough times and it's because it's 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 self-perpetuating because it also it feels good to eat that much and right. then you get the approval and it's it's you know so it kind of it, it just sinks in because we're mm. you know it's just behaviorism we're, yeah we're, we're, that's we, real we learn that stuff and it comes from a good place but you know you do that when you're in your 40s and it's it doesn't work anymore i feel like that one really took kind of a funny turn with the way it got translated to our kids because you never like force them to eat but it was like if you didn't eat what was served to you at dinner like that was the option moving forward like mm -hmm. even if so like there was one time our kids were in bed and they're like i'm hungry i'm hungry i need a snack and they had started doing that every night they wanted like a piece of toast in bed which mm -hmm. is like the messiest snack you could eat in bed but that's what they had both decided was the right thing and one night you had just had enough and you're like if you're hungry you'll eat this cold potato like it was like a baked potato in the fridge so it's cooked but it was cold and nothing on it and our younger son, Andrew, he had to have been like six, mm -hmm. was like, I'm just so hungry. And you're like, OK, then you can have this cold potato. And he's looked you right in the eye and ate it. <laughs> like, so I feel like you've not ever been like, you have to eat all the things. But it was like, but if you don't eat it for dinner, it's what's for breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> right. I don't think I ever did that. That was, that was, yeah, but, but I, I, I would have. Yeah. I mean, there, uh, there's at least been times at night, like even as our kids are teenagers where they're like, they've eaten their dinner and later they're like, I'd like a snack. And you're like, there is still spaghetti. Yeah. And they're like, no, I was thinking more like a cookie or like a glass of milk, just spaghetti, spaghetti's the snack. <laughs> and then they come to you. Yeah. And then I'm like, here, baby, have a cookie. You're fine. <laughs> yeah. 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 Those cycle things. And then, but some of you too, like, there's also, we have a tendency to like, run as far as we can in the other direction with cycle breaking like yeah we like and i think maybe i've gone too far with that so here's one for me like my family growing up we didn't talk about hard things like real things like we mm -hmm. didn't talk about like death or sex or any of these things like the real stuff it was like sh 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 sh. Yeah. just just don't we're not going to talk about it um kind of like that waspy you know thing like mm -hmm. if something's hard you just don't talk about it just focus on the stuff happening in front of you so I decided I wouldn't do that with my kids, that and we would talk boy, about things. boy, <laughs> you sure didn't. Those so, poor kids, my when poor you'd be kids. driving them by yourself and they would happen to ask you a question. Oh, my gosh. Like, our kids, I have been a truth teller with our children from the time they were quite small, but maybe, maybe too far. Maybe too Maybe far. a little bit. I feel like they knew all the things about all the things from the time they were very young. And because uh, they would ask me a question and instead of being like, we don't talk about that. I'd be like, oh, well, cycle breaker. I'm going to talk about that. And so like they knew about like Santa from when they were really little, um, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like mm -hmm. that. In my head right now, I'm like, oh, my gosh, what if a tiny child is listening to this? And what, what about Santa? And I'm like, if you as a parent have let them listen this far to us. <laughs> I'll just do you a favor. We'll just talk about it now. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, there's that was mine. Probably was mm -hmm. like the over thing. Yeah. So like, if you were gonna offer a word of wisdom or like encouragement or support to someone who is trying to break break a generational curse, what would you tell them? Oh boy. I know. Kind of put me on the spot here. I know. Um, I did. I think I think that this sticking with that, that the visiting the iniquity thing is. Uh, there's just something powerful about looking at things that are hard to look at hmm. in yourself or in your family or, or wherever yeah. and not turning away. Yeah. I, because that's, we, we, we don't want to deal with that stuff. And right. so it, you can just put it in a closet or you can just pretend it's not there, but to like really give it your focused attention and just to see it for what it is, that it's true. You don't have right. to, you don't have to feel guilt or shame or anything about it but just to right. see it uh, and I think it's the first step I think it's really important the guilt and shame things and I think we you know, no matter how no matter how much damage your parents did we all have this tendency to be overprotective of like our families and that's good like in public yeah like you bond together like it's you against the world that's great mm -hmm. but when you're doing your own work in your head it's okay for a second to admit like hey this happened and maybe that wasn't okay or mm -hmm. hey this happened and I don't, I don't want that to be what it looks like in my life, but I think we get 
like so protective of our families that we think we're like sinning against our parents or we're not honoring our mother and father Mm -hmm. to be honest about things that need to change to really make sure that those generational curses don't follow. Yeah. And I would say too, like cut yourself some slack. Like it's really hard work and you're going against stuff in your bones. Like Scazzaro writes about this. He's like a family counselor guy and he wrote, Jesus may be in your heart, but grandpa's in your bones. Um, And I love that because it's so true. Like it's not your fault that you grew up around something that's like really just deep in you. And it's going to have to be like a conscious level thing to fight it. And you got to pray on it too. like, let God be a part of that with you. Um, So if you're someone that's like, Oh, I I'm starting to realize maybe there's something in my family system. I don't want to perpetuate to my, you know, my kids or it doesn't have to be your kids. Like just the person at the grocery store that you fuss at because it touches something deep in you that you don't know why you're upset about. Mm -hmm. This stuff doesn't just play out in your house. It plays out like, all over the place in your place of work with your friends um just cut yourself some slack and when it happens and it comes up and you're like oh what was that yeah just like try again every day is a fresh start with god but god's not punishing you for something your parents or your grandparents did it's so important yeah it says that goes on you know because there's that little thing in exodus 34 but then in you know deuteronomy yeah uh, 24 it says uh, parents shall not be put to death for their children you know? right Great, <laughs> you know, we, we 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 find what we can, you know, yeah. the little glimpses of, of you know how this progressed. It's not quite where we would say it should be, right? But like you see the the, the development. So you know, parents should not be put to death for their children, or children for their parents. Uh, uh, only for their own crimes may persons be put to death. Yay! Step uh, in the right direction. And uh, um, yeah, so, so that the, the the Bible definitely. That, that's that's the the emphasis yeah. is you know you're 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 your own person and you're your you're, own person you're need to in that sense deal with that stuff and we see that with Jesus when they're like Jesus when they with the blind man like who sinned this man or his parents and Jesus is like neither yeah he's just blind Some people are blind guys right? he didn't sin and end up blind and it definitely wasn't his parents sinned and he ended up blind and that's all you know why we have physical issues and all those things is a topic for another day but so if you're if you're someone's in a family system that's got problems and spoiler alert that's all of us Mm -hmm. like look for them if you don't already know what they are ask god to be a part of that healing process with you and look for ways that you can be a cycle breaker to to make a change even if it's a small one yeah and go to counseling yes like please go to counseling therapy is the greatest thing in the world yeah if you can afford it go and if you can't come talk to us and we'll find money for you to go like yeah Everybody should have a therapist. Thank you, Rick. That's our counselor. We love him. (laughs) Um, Go to a therapist. Do the work. Yeah. All right. Hey, thanks for listening to Church Chat. That's Generational Curses. That's it for today. Um, We're going to be podcasting next with Vanessa and Jonathan, so you'll get to hear from them as they talk about their faith story. All right. So any questions you have, just comment or or, or email or text or just come come to church on Sunday, Maitland Presbyterian Church, 930 Mm -hmm. and 11. That's right. And uh, ask us questions and we'll... You know, but write them down so we remember to talk about them. Yeah. Give us some chance to like research them. I don't know. Sometimes we're like, oh, let me get back to you. Yeah. Uh, But thanks for coming to church chat. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.